Hey, what's going on guys? It's been a minute. I've been just busy, busy, busy. Uh, work and chores and you know, the weather's warm so I'm doing yard work and trying to fix a bunch of stuff around the house. Um, but this is not about any of that crap. Um, I bought a car. I bought it two weeks, two and a half weeks ago in Florida and then drove it all the way home to Kansas City, which was like, Without stopping, it would have been 20 hours of driving. It took me about two days to get home. Um, anyways, let me show you the car, and I'm gonna do a little bit of video, a few videos on like working on things because I don't find a good resource, I guess, for what I'm trying to do. Um, but anyways, I'm pretty proud of this car. I'm pretty excited about it. Let me show you. There it is. It is a Porsche Cayman S. It's a 2006 or a 987 generation one. Um, it is awesome. All right, here's the interior. It's got about 60,000 miles on it, a little over. I had about 58,000 when I bought it. You know, 1,400 mile drive will make it break that 60,000 mark for sure. But nice car, leather seats. It is a manual. I only buy manuals because I know how to drive a car. Haha. <laughs> Anybody stuck with an automatic, you know what you're doing. Um, interesting thing is the Ignition is on the left side Never had a car like that. I did have a Saab which had the ignition between the seats would have been right here. That was really cool um, Anyways, and then it's got a uh, Aftermarket stereo and this is a really expensive thing to have done this little piece um, Converts the uh, factory Bose Stereo and makes it work with an aftermarket stereo and it's pretty pricey so I'm glad that that's been done because the factory stereo is kind of meh, you know. But um, I mean, it sounds good. It just, you know, it's it's pretty crude. All right, so this car is not in perfect shape. It is a 2006, so it's got a little bit of wear and tear in in the places you kind of expect. Um, there's some things missing, like there's like a tool kit that's uh, like a panel in the in the frunk. It does have a frunk because the engine is right back here there's only two seats and i'm sitting in one of them so right behind me is the, where the engine is there is actually a trunk behind the engine it's not very big but then i do have more storage in the front um but there's a panel there that ha holds like a tool kit and a compressor and the tire iron and that sort of stuff that's missing i had to order a new one it's not here yet it's gonna be a couple hundred bucks um there the rear window brake light i don't know if you can see it let me see if i can you can kind of see that red strip right there. It's right there. That is a, uh, a, a brake light. And the um, it, it's broken basically. Like it, it works as a brake light, but it should have a shroud around it so I don't see it in the rear window. It should just be blacked out. Um, but I ordered a new one. I just got to put it in. I'll probably do a video on that because I have not found anything anywhere about how to do that um, it seems pretty simple but I have to pull all the trim off and you know all the way around the whole rear lid and replace that there is a uh, cool little cover because it's rear mid-engine that um, where you refill your oil and the um, coolant and it's a little door and it pops down but uh, the cover kind of like the shroud that it, it pops off um, so I just got to glue that back on. Um, the prior owner stuck the wrong battery in it, which is, it works, but it doesn't fit. And there's a, a supposed to be a plastic panel that it's in the front and it's supposed to go over it. It doesn't sit right because the battery's too tall. So I'm gonna have to replace the battery at some point. So that's a thing. And then I have the rear shocks are blown on this car. Didn't know that when I bought it. I don't think the prior owner realized it. Um, I thought the car had an oil leak. 
because I got out of the car and I could smell oil burning, but it turns out it's just the rear shocks blown, leaking oil onto the exhaust and burning it. So I got new shocks. I don't have them on yet. I'm waiting for the shop to have an opening, which should be here in a few days, hopefully. And um, yeah, get those put on. Hopefully it'll ride better because it's kind of a rough ride right now. I mean, it's kind of what I expected out of a sports car like this, but um, yeah, it's a little, it's a little jarring sometimes. All right, I'm gonna take it for a quick little drive. Um, the whole reason why I'm able to do this video right now is the internet is out of my house. There's an outage and I can't work without the internet and I work from home. So I don't really have anywhere I can go right now to work. <laughs> so because I have an outage, I have time to do a video. So I'm gonna do it on the, the, the car here. Um, I'll probably do a few videos on it. Like, you know, I'm gonna be doing that rear light um, and uh, probably a few other little nitpicky things, but um, probably not going to be a ton of content on this car unless I, for some reason, just feel like I got to spend a ton of money because these cars are not cheap and parts are not necessarily that cheap for them. So uh, I don't think I'll be doing that much to the car, but you never know. You never know. Anyways, let me uh, give it a start up here. I'll let you guys hear it. Hear what it sounds like from the inside here. I don't know how well it's going to pick up on the microphone. It has 295 horsepower. I can't remember the torque. It's like 260, 250, somewhere in there. Um, but it's pretty, it's pretty peppy. And I typically just drive it in the regular mode, but there is a sport mode that sharpens the throttle and uh, has an auto blip feature. But um, with no rear or with the rear shocks not working, I'm having traction problems because the car in the rear doesn't settle, which kind of sucks. This car, it's interesting because it has very long gears. It, oh no, I don't want to go that way. There's construction that way, and it. Most cars, when you're driving them seem like they prefer lower rpm they don't re re they don't want you to beat on them that hard you know like this car comes alive like 4500 rpms it's like it's like woo let's go <laughs> it, it it like lights up um and if you're not ready for that man it it'll it'll throw you around um pretty cool Pretty peppy little machine. I'm not gonna get on too hard right now because it's cold. I don't like beating on the car too hard when it's engine's not warm yet. There's gonna be a lot of jumping and bumping because no rear shocks. <laughs> well, there's rear shocks. They're just not worth anything. That's my new beast. I love it so far. It's a lot of fun. Uh, some of you might be thinking, oh, he, he's able to buy that because he has all this YouTube money. I don't make any money off YouTube. Not even close. 
zero, zero dollars. <laughs> um, there's a lot of requirements you have to have for making money on YouTube. You have to have like a thousand subscribers or 10,000 subscribers, something crazy like that. I'm not even close to that. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be working on this car, uh, just like little nitpicky things that bother me because I just want it to be in the best condition it can be in. Um, it seemed like, it, you know, kind of a smart buy because these cars, everybody thinks are going to become classics, these Caymans, um, especially the first generation that still have the hydraulic steering. Um, and they've kind of hit the, the bottom of the depreciation curve. I watched a video on someone who kind of, there's a few guys that do this on YouTube that kind of look at cars and look at where they're, how they're depreciating and everything like that. And they kind of figure out when the best time to buy one is, you know, a vehicle of a certain type is. And he did one on the Porsche. He did it for Germany. And then there, he got a bunch of requests to do um, that for um, the U.S. market as well, which he did. And uh, yeah, all the signs point to came in being a really smart buy right about now. Um, but there's, you know, little things like the, this headlight, it's got a little bit of fogginess to it, so I'm gonna have to get a headlight restoration kit and, and repair that. Um, that'll, that might be something I do. Only one, of them, only one of them needs restoration, so. There's a lot of little things, you know, that I'm gonna do, but um, for the most part, um, probably not gonna be a ton of stuff about this car. I still have a ton of work to do on the, the Subaru over there, so. A ton of work, I mean. <laughs> Just to make it road legal again. But yeah, like, some people might be wondering, like, why did I go with a Porsche? You know, you could get something more practical. Uh, that's very true. I guess I could have got something more practical. I came from something more practical of my black car that uh, was also a Super Impreza. Uh, it was a very practical car. It was a great car. Um, All-wheel drive. Had a roof rack as a hatchback so I could fit a ton of stuff when I went camping. Um, this car doesn't have any of that. I can put a roof rack on it, which I'm probably going to do. Um, just not leave it on there but you know I'll have it on there when I need it so that way I can move my mountain bike and my kayak around um, but I looked at a bunch of different cars this is actually I actually tried to buy a bunch of different cars this is like the seventh or eighth car I tried to buy um, and then finally because when you try to buy from an individual like a used car like it, people are not trusting of anybody and so it can be very very difficult to get someone to actually talk to you and deal with you and everything like that it's it's the weirdest thing um and I, I i tend to gravitate towards small sports cars that have a manual transmission i looked at the brz i looked at i looked at honda civics i looked at rx7s because rx7 is my favorite car of all time um and uh yeah, there's a f several other cars. Anyways, I wound up, I, don't, I wasn't even looking at for a Porsche. It wasn't even on the menu. And then I noticed somewhere along the line that I somehow like a Porsche came in or came up in my search results. Um, and I was like, that's interesting. Like I could actually afford that car. You know, like it's not, it's not like I bought some crazy car. I mean, the car new is like over $70,000 the way it's spec'd out. Um, but buying a used one, you know, I could have bought a Camry or, you know, <laughs> something like that, you know, or a BRZ was actually, the BRZ I was looking at was more than this car, more than I paid for it. Um, a lot of the cars I was looking at were more than I paid for this one. Um, and all the reviews say, you know, this is a great car, really well made, very reliable. Um, so I was like, you know what, let's do it. It's only money. You can make more. Um, it looks baller. It drives like a dream. It's it's a lot of fun. <laughs> so, anyways, guys, uh, that's gonna be it for this video. Hopefully, I'm gonna get more time to work on things. I, I've just been swamped with work and you know fixing things around the house and chores. Um, like, I'll give you an example. Uh, this light right here is new. You can see there's a hole, or there was a hole right there. Uh, patched it. I've got to sand it down remud it, resand it, like block it and sand it, and then repaint the entire ceiling in here. So that's that's like a thing I've been doing, you know, um, that took a day or so. And I've done a couple other light fixtures around the house because most of them are like stupid crap that looks like that that I hate. Um, yeah, and then now that it's getting warm out, 
been planting gardens and doing landscaping and getting all the leaves out of my yard and just a ton of stuff. Like it, it really adds up. Anyway, uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm just kind of rambling here, so I'll probably just I'm just gonna cut it cut it off right here, and uh, I'll I'll hopefully be working on something soon. See you in the next video, guys. Bye.